Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another Honeybee video. Today's video is actually featuring this Eternal Love set, which is from the new Honeybee release, which is also illustrated by my very best friend. Um, so for a while I have been wanting to do um, kind of like a series that was something that was new in the year that I wanted to do where I kind of concentrated on things that you know, seasoned crafters kind of take for granted that everybody knows. I've seen a lot of my comments lately who, you know, I'm a new crafter, I'm a new card maker. And so, I don't know, maybe like once a month, once every two months, I'm not sure. I would like to do a video where we talk about, um, like, things that we know. Uh, today we're going to be talking about heat embossing. So here what I'm showing you is the two ways that I prefer to use an anti-static tool. When you're heat embossing, your embossing powder will stick to anything that has static or stickiness on it. And so that is why you want to use an anti-static tool. Now, I prefer, I used to use the bag, but I prefer the one um, from the Rabbit Hole Designs, which is the powder tool that looks kind of like a makeup brush. Um, and then also you can heat emboss with any pigment ink or any clear sticky ink. Versamark is a heat embossing ink, um, otherwise known as a watermark ink. Today I'm doing all white heat embossing, so I'm using a white pigment ink. Um, but anyway, so the, the point of this video is to not just go over the basics which I will do because if you're new, you might not know this. Um, but it's also to kind of show you how you can jazz up your heat embossing. And so that way there's something for for the new and the seasoned. Um, so here, this little Morning Glory cluster, this is drawn, by the way, I said my very best friend and you may not know who that is. Um, <laughs> my very best friend is Dawn Wolseigel. She used to own W Plus 9 um, and she has since uh, closed that business and moved on to, thankfully, illustrating for other people because I love her images and I'm so excited to be able to use them again. So here I'm using a white detail embossing powder. I think a lot of times people get frustrated because maybe they don't get the best results and your embossing powder really does matter. If you are looking to heat emboss sentiments or fine line Im images, you do want a detail style embossing powder. Um, anything that's going to have glitter in it or uh, any sort of you know sparkle or iridescence is going to be thicker. It's going to be chunky. It's not going to be really great for fine line or or for sentiments. Um, same thing with um, like UT, which is an ultra thick embossing powder. Uh, you can do so many cool things with that, but embossing images that I want to be able <laughs> to see well, that is not one of them. Um, so there's tons of different colors of embossing powder. I tend to use whites and metallics the most. Um, so I typically, as you saw, like dump mine out on a piece of paper and then just use the paper to scoop it back in. But there are other people um, who put it in a container, like they have a white embossing powder that's their go-to. And so they put it into a container and that makes it easier for them to store it. And then they just put it on with a plastic spoon. Uh, whatever works for you. These are just information that I have gathered over the years that I'm trying to share. So way number one that we are going to kind of step up our embossing and really help it to shine. By the way, uh, most of this is without adding any uh, like coloring to the images. It's just using the embossing is we're going to add a shadow. So I'm using alcohol markers for that. Specifically, I'm using Copic markers. You could also do this with colored pencils. You could do this if you're working on watercolor paper with watercolor. Um, but I'm using Copic markers. Again, I'm not adding like a lot of, I'm not adding any shadow to the actual image. I'm just adding it around there. And in order to successfully add a shadow, you want to pick a direction. So if my light source is in the top right, my shadows will be into the bottom left. I go in with my darker color first, and then I go in with my lighter color to blend it out. Watch that top left corner because it's really, really dark when you put it down. But as the alcohol evaporates, it gets much softer. So maybe Make sure when you're testing out your colors on your colored cardstock that you're sure of how you like that you've tried it and what your colors are going to look like. Um, 
because this is supposed to, you can see that one in the top left, how it's not flat anymore. It's lifted up off the page. And that is because we've added that shadow to give it some oomph. This is a really great way to add dimension to images that you're not coloring. These cards are also really fast, super fast. Um, I will say that you can if you're using alcohol markers, you can color your embossing. And so um, if you're getting, to, you know, like I am, I'm getting right up on the line. There are going to be times where I color that embossing. In order to fix that, you just need a colorless blender. In Copic's case, it's a zero. And you're just going to go right over the embossing, pick up the um, pigment, and then scrape it off, you know, just rub it off on a scrap piece of paper. In order to finish off this card, I am just going to give it a little bit of a white frame. Um, and I am going to do that with a T-square ruler. And you can see I am using my grid mat to make sure everything is lined up. And I'm going to use a white gel pen. The white gel pen that I prefer for things like this is a number 10. Oftentimes people run into the problem where like their pen isn't working that great and it really usually has to do with the the size of the tip so here you can see i ran into the problem where it wasn't even and it was my own fault because i didn't do it with pencil first i was rushing that was my fault another way that we can do it which is going to be substantially easier this is the way that i'm doing it now i'm taping down the piece so it doesn't move I have a square piece of white cardstock that is cut to the size that I want. And now this one, I'm going to trace it uh, with that same white gel pen. And this for me worked so much better. Once I get my tape out of the way, right? Worked so much better. But normally I do my frames with a ruler and I don't have any issues. But the problem I was having is see how this top line, like nothing is coming out of my pen. Um... I did end up switching pens, I think, in the middle of this because I use them so often. I do believe that one was dying. But because of that, I could not see, like I couldn't see that it wasn't working. So what you see me doing now is standing up and changing the angle of my pen. So if you, and now it's working just fine, right? So if you were having trouble with your white gel pen, make sure that you try changing the angle that you're using it at because there's like a little roller ball inside there that moves and that's what moves the ink out and if for some reason you have a bad angle and it's not moving the little roller then you're not going to get a great line so now um, I'm also going to add that little shadow right next to my little frame because this is you know part of my piece here um, but again, like I'm trying to get as close as I can to the line without going over it. If for some reason you go over it, you will color your gel pen. Um, just do a second layer over top. Um, that would be how I would blend that out if I if I had that problem. I fortunately did not. Um, but then we have this nice little framed in design um, that really showcases these images with just heat embossing. For the sentiment for this one, I do not know why. This is like my go-to white heat embossing with a colored cardstock for sympathy cards. Um, and especially blue because blue is like a really calming, comforting color. So this um, set, this uh, sentiment is from the Blo Blooming View set from Honeybee. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's Blooming View. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just going to, again, heat emboss this in white. I am using that white detail powder um, so that I can get just a really good embossing and it's totally legible and then I'm going to cut this out with its accompanying dye. Um, you guys know how I feel about honeybee sentiments if you uh, watch my videos. I just, I love them. I think they're fantastic. So I did end up trimming down my background just a little bit so that I could put it on a white border and then I will put the sentiment. You could do it on the top or the bottom either or would be totally fine. Uh, and then mounting it on the white um, the white card base with just a little bit of a matte showing is just going to help create a little bit of contrast um, because we obviously are going very monochromatic here. Don't fear, this is the one that I messed up. That's the one I'm putting the glue on. <laughs> um, 
And then it's just going to provide us a little bit of contrast, and then this card is going to be done. If you were doing this as another type of card, not a sympathy card, you know, you could definitely put, like, gems on it or something like that. I think in the end, I ended up doing some pearls just because they felt softer. Um, but then that card's done. So the next way we're going to do some heat embossing and just kind of help it be the star of the show is we're going to create a background. In this Eternal Love set, Dawn has three clusters of flowers, all stunning. Um, one is the Morning Glories we've already used, one is Camellias, and one is Cabbage Roses. I am going to be using all three for this. I've treated with my anti-static tool on this like really pretty coral paper. I'm going to stamp in that same white pigment ink. Again, you can heat embossed white with a clear ink like Versamark, but I find that I get a much better result if I use a white pigment ink. Um, and so I am going to stamp that down. Now, pigment ink will stay wet. Versamark will stay wet with enough time for you to heat emboss one or two things but I don't do that. So that's just a personal thing. Other crafters do. They'll stamp down a couple and then they'll go back and heat emboss it. I just find that I get a better result if I heat emboss it right away. Um, so that is what I do. I also preheat my heat gun. You'll see, and it really depends on the weight of your paper, how much warping you get, but when you put heat to paper, it naturally warps. If you have your gun preheated so that the embossing powder starts melting almost immediately, then you limit the amount of warping that you have. Now, I have everything heat embossed, and now I'm going to go in, I'm going to clean my stamps really well, because I don't know exactly where I'm going to be laying them down. Also, it's just a good habit to be in, of cleaning your stamps. I'm not that great at it. And then I'm going to fill in this corner here. Um... I like to, when I'm doing a pattern, you can, you know, you'll see that one that I'm like, it's just a couple of leaves. I like to stamp off the page because it gives you a look of continuity as if the pattern continues on outside of the paper. Um, and so once I have these three stamped, I'm going to go in again with that detail embossing powder and hit all those little areas, funnel it back into my container and then heat set them. When you're heat setting, you want to make sure you're waiting until everything is nice and smooth. If it still looks granular or granulated, it may not be completely melted. Now, there's like a middle of the road because you don't want to overheat it. It'll start to lose its shine, um, but you do want to make sure it is heated and it's completely smooth. I am also going to trim this one down just an eighth of an inch on each side. So again, I can have my white mat in the background. If you've never been to my channel before, I do love a matchy look. I do love a matchy matchy. In order to draw the viewer's eye, the recipient's eye to the center, which is where my sentiment is going to be, I am going to add some ink blending over top of this. Heat embossing will resist your ink blending as long as you're using like a dye water-based ink. Um, if you're using something like a pigment ink, it may sit on top of it. You could buff it with a cloth um, to get rid of that. But so I'm using saltwater taffy and then abandoned coral. And you can see for the abandoned coral, it's really just right on the edge. I'm not going too far into the card. I love the natural color of this card stock. And so I didn't want to completely cover it up. I just want to create a halo that is going to draw the eye to the center. Um, I'm also doing this little piece here. This is going to be where my sentiment goes. Um, so I wanted to have them, again, be matchy-matchy and kind of stand out from the background. This will have another piece of paper that goes over it. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about like how the center looks, um, just enough that it's going to give a, just a little bit of contrast. I like to do my ink blending twice. Not everybody does. You do you. Uh, but once I have that abandoned coral down, then I will go back over it with the saltwater taffy. 
Here is where my sentiment strip is going to go. This is from the Eternal Love set, um, and I just have a small piece of white cardstock, and I am going to stamp it in a coral color. You can use whatever color you would like that would match your cardstock. I believe the one that I ended up using was... I think it was Fruit Punch by Hero Arts, which is a reactive ink. Um, also, distress inks don't stamp well, but distress oxides do. So you could use an oxide. You could use abandoned coral and an oxide, and it would look it would look great. So now we have our white. It's matted around with the coral. We're just going to go ahead and mount our cardstock onto um, our white card base, and then we'll pop up our sentiment over top of that. So I. Guys, it's been so busy around here. I feel like I'm just so completely backed up with all of the things that I am trying to get done. Um, Work-wise, it's it's a lot. Um, and then, like, the kids are having Valentine's parties, you know, so we were, like, prepping for all of those things. Um, it, it's just been, I don't know what's going on. Uh, the, oh, you'll see me how I flipped it. That's another thing that's really nice about like a continuous pattern. You can use it either way. So um, I actually ended up liking it this way better. And so that is the way that I committed to putting my sentiment. Um, but then that one is done. For the last one, um, here we're going to use the clear sticky ink, but we're not going to use it with any embossing powder. We're going to use it as a watermark. This is why we call it watermark ink, because it creates a tone-on-tone -tone look. And this is the Vintage Flora background uh, stamp. So I'm just using the Versamark, nothing else. Um, if you don't have Versamark, you could also stamp in the same color ink. So you could pick a gray and stamp over top of it and get a very similar look. Versamark works great because then there is really no color to clean up. I do like to stamp mine twice, especially with a stamp like this with tons of detail. Um, I just feel like it gives a little bit more of a bolder result uh, that you can is actually legible, like you can see it if you stamp it uh, two times. And because this is a red rubber stamp, that's why I removed that foam so that it would fit into my Misty. The third and last way that we are going to highlight our embossing, this is the Cabbage Roses. Uh, it's just so beautiful. She's so good. I just love her images. But we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're heating it with an anti-static tool. We're stamping down white, but this time I'm stamping on watercolor paper. Yes, there is a difference between regular cardstock and watercolor paper. And if you want a watercolor, you should definitely, definitely use watercolor paper because regular cardstock will not react the same way. It's made to have a coating on it that keeps the water from absorbing, which allows your pigments to move. So I've stamped this twice. Now I'm using that, again, white detail embossing powder, and um, I will heat set this. And then we're going to do some water coloring. Now, some of us crafters have like real regular watercolors. Some of us have watercolor markers. Some of us have distress inks. I am going to use distress inks for today's watercoloring because, again, I like to be matchy-matchy. <laughs> And so I picked the same colors of the cardstock that we've previously used. So we're getting the saltwater taffy, we're getting the abandoned coral, and then the stormy sky was the closest to the blue, and I'm going to use that for my leaves. For this particular technique, there really isn't one, because we're using the... Um, the embossing as an emboss resist because it's going to resist all of the pigment and you'll be able to see those white lines pop forward. We don't have to be super careful about where we're putting our color uh, because they'll each stay in their own little pool blocked by the walls of the embossing. So I just did an all over. Don't mind my camera. Not really sure what happened there. I am... Um, we did an all over pool of saltwater taffy and then I went back in and dropped in some abandoned coral where I wanted it to be a little bit darker. I am working with a number two round brush. Um, I prefer a smaller brush, but again, that's that's a uh, dealer's choice, whatever it is that you're more comfortable with. So I'm wetting the whole rose. I'm going in with that um, 
saltwater taffy, dropping it in, uh, just kind of randomly letting it do its own thing. This style of watercolor is really, really easy to get great results. We're not I mean, you guys, you guys have seen my detailed watercoloring. Like, if I'm doing a no-line image, I'm going to detail color it. But for this, there is it's not necessary because that embossing helps to create the separation. And so you can just drop in pigment and let it do its thing, and it's going to be beautiful. Now, watercolors always dry back a bit softer. So if you want a bit of a bolder color, you need to make sure that you have put down bolder color or you may have to do a second layer. Either way, totally fine. Um, so yeah, so it's been it's been a little bit wild around here, like schedule wise, and I just don't feel like I'm ever getting ahead. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I got to come up with a better system or I got to stop taking on so much work. I'm not really sure. Um, but then there's always stuff that comes up because you know life. I mean, life just happens to us. Like today, for example, uh, I had my own doctor's appointment, which cut into my work day. And then at, I don't know, like 1130, Peanut called and was like, I don't feel good. Um, I ha Well, not true. The nurse called and said he doesn't feel good. He has a headache. Can you bring him some Tylenol? So I thought I was going to just take him some Tylenol. And then this poor baby, you guys, my kid does not like attention. So it's rare that he does anything that like would cause a scene. They had sent him back to class while I drove up there. And so he comes down the hallway, and as soon as he sees me, he just starts crying. And he's like, I don't feel good. I'm tired. I have a headache. Um, and he's like, they said I can't go home because I don't have a fever. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I know what they were trying to do. They were trying to make sure that he stayed in school and wasn't just, you know, scamming out. And and I'm not mad about that. Um, but I told him, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him home. Like, he's tired for reasons that are outside of his control, and I'm not going to punish him by making him stay if he does not feel good. Whereas like the other day, he stayed up himself. Um, like he had plenty of ample time to go to bed and get a good night's sleep. And he chose to stay up, um, you know, messing around in his room. And the next morning when he was like, I'm tired, I don't want to school. I was like, well, get out of bed. Like you made choices last night and you got to live with them. But these particular choices uh, of why he was tired, he didn't he didn't have a choice. So, um, yeah, so I brought him home. And obviously that took some <laughs> that takes some time out of your day. Um, so here I have um, die cut the, um, the rose using its coordinating die, also stamped my sentiment in that kind of charcoal ink. And now I am going to pop this up. Again, you see that white mat that helps, <laughs> that helps me feel better because they're matchy-matchy. And then that's it. That's like kind of the third way that you can use heat embossing uh, really easily and really have it like pack a punch is just by doing an emboss resist. And you don't even have to do watercolor. You could do ink blending over top of it. Um, you could color it any other way. Um, but I... I just, I really loved how kind of soft and romantic this was feeling. Oh, I did do gems, but I did like blue gems. I thought I did pearls. Um, these pearls, or these gems, why, why Kelly, why, uh, are also from Honeybee. They are my favorite gems. Um, that's no lie. This is from the Hugs and Kisses set, um, and it just kind of matched perfectly for the... Um, for the other ones, I did use the Vintage Love. I chose some grayish, like, metallic, like, dark silver kind of colors for this one here. And then for the coral, I went back to that Hugs and Kisses set. It's got a really pretty uh, coral-colored rhinestone. Um, last but not least, I did add a little bit of shimmer. This is a way that you can create just a smidge of contrast. Like, I just put it on the florals for this particular card. And you can see it makes the, the cardstock maybe just a little darker, but it does leave a shimmer behind, which is really soft and pretty. Um, and then for this one over here, I just added a little bit of white gel pen, um, 
just to kind of fill in those gaps, just some, you know, a couple of dots here and there around the leaves. Uh, not necessary, but just something extra you can do. And then that's all three cards. So I hope this inspires you to try heat embossing. If you're a new card maker, I hope that it was informative for you. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. I always appreciate you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.